What's up, everyone? Welcome to another edition of the UFC Quick Picks here on the Mayo Media Network. We have UFC Atlantic City this weekend, Blanchfield versus Fioro in the main event. 14 fights on the slate should be a really entertaining card. As usual, I'm going to give you my favorite cash game play, tournament play, salary play, and a matchup I like from this event. Uh, let's just get right into it. My favorite cash game play this week. I am rolling with the main event here. Going to play Aaron Blanchfield at 8.8K. She is minus 185 to win over Fioro. And honestly, I think this is the fight should be lined competitively. I'm not even that confident Blanchfield wins. But Blanchfield has been a DraftKings superstar in her early UFC career. Scores of 126, 115, 95, 124, 98, 81. And several of those big scores have come in three-round decisions. Now she gets a five-round matchup against Fioro, where it's just clear that her upside is, you know, 120-plus based on her style. She's an aggressive grappler. She averages uh, 2.86 takedowns per 15 minutes. She's able to control fighters. She's able to land a lot of ground strikes. And over 25 minutes, if Blanchfield wins, I would expect it to come from grappling. She's going to score very well. She's also plus 150 to win inside the distance. And the fight as a whole is projected um, minus 150 over three and a half rounds, minus 120 under four and a half. So, you know, around that four and a half round marker, which the is a good case for Blanchfield in cash games. Because even if Blanchfield loses, which again, I do think is possible, she's still likely getting five rounds to work with. She could still land takedowns in that span. She could still land 60 to 100 significant strikes. And it gives her one of the best floors on this entire slate, along with one of the best ceilings. Plus, this is a card with a very strong top range in the 9.1, 9 point, you know, from 9 to 9.5K, let's say. We're getting Blanchfield at a discount at 8.8K. I think she's an easy option in cash game, uh, cash games this week. And I will be rolling with her. All right, next up in tournaments, Let's go with Kowlin Lochran at 9.4K. Very difficult to decipher this top range, and I think you can make the case for anyone here. Julio Arce has got a great inside the distance line. Bruno Silva's got a great inside the distance line. Ruz Boav, great inside the distance line. I mean, and I, I'm hoping those three will be prioritized over Lochran, who's only at minus 115 to win inside the distance, but is a pretty heavy favorite here over on help at Chaco. He's minus 383 to win. And Lahren has the grappling upside that most of those fighters do not. He's an aggressive grappler. A lot of his success in the regional scene comes from takedowns. And he did shoot, uh, I think, more than 10 takedowns in his UFC debut against Taylor Lapalus. Yeah, he shot 11 takedowns, still earned six minutes of control. Just Lapalus was able to defend him. But now he's fighting Pacheco, who in theory is at a big physical disadvantage, is at a big wrestling disadvantage, and probably won't be able to defend those takedowns. So Lochran, I think, either wins this fight by landing takedowns, controlling Pacheco, and finishing him on the mat, or by landing takedowns, Pacheco scrambling back up to his feet, and Lochran having to get more and more takedowns as the fight progresses. Either way, I'm projecting a pretty strong floor and ceiling for Lochran in a win, still doesn't mean he's going to easily beat out Arce and Silva and Ruzbelov, and it's totally fine to spread out your exposure in this range. I do like Lochran for his wrestling upside, especially if he can also win inside the distance. I think he can reach a ceiling that some of the others potentially cannot, who are more boomer bust, more dependent on an early knockout. Um, really strong range this week, but I'm going after the grappling upside with Lochran in tournaments. All right, my salary play of the week. Let's get a little bit frisky here. I'm going far down the board to Chris Weidman at 6.9K. He's the underdog against Bruno Silva, probably rightfully so. Bruno Silva is minus 245 to win. Weidman plus 205. And, I mean, Weidman's almost 40 years old now. You know, he, he hasn't competed often recently. He's been hurt badly He's had his leg broken. He's had uh, he's been knocked out plenty of times in his last ten fights. So it's really really hard to be confident in Weidman. I, I, I you know this is not a this is not a safe play by any means. And I think the most likely outcome is that Bruno Silva can hurt him and, and finish the fight. But you know 
I hope that Weidman still has his grappling skills somewhere down there. He's an elite wrestler. He's an elite submission grappler. And that's primarily what's led him to success throughout his UFC career. And Bruno Silva still has defensive question marks there. I mean, you go watch Bruno Silva win against Andrew Sanchez in 2021, gave up seven takedowns, put in dominant positions. And yeah, Silva still won that fight, but it's really hard to watch that and think Chris Weidman can't duplicate some success. And that's not an end-all be-all, but Gerald Mearshart took Bruno Silva down. Um, I think it's possible that if Weidman doesn't get knocked out early, Weidman can land takedowns, control Silva on the ground, and potentially even finish the fight. He's 6.9K. I don't think he's going to be very popular. It's a risky target, but... We're saving a lot of salary here, and we're getting a grappling-based fighter who, if he wins, can probably exceed value and contend with the optimal lineup. So it's a tough range this week, not a lot of safe options. Not I'm not projecting a ton of underdogs to even win. Um, I think people are going to be on Dumas in this range more than Weidman. I think people might be on Petrosky, Landwehr. And once you start getting into the mid-sevens, that's where more chalk will be. But this far down, it's it's I'm not expecting a lot of ownership. I like Weidman for the sneaky aspect, the leverage aspect against a more popular Bruno Silva in the grappling. So 6.9K, salary play of the week is Weidman. All right, finally, our matchup of the week. I'm going to go with Chidi Njikawani versus Reese McKee. Njikawani's 8.6K, McKee 7.6K. Njikawani's a slight favorite at minus uh, 138 now, so it keeps dropping toward McKee. Ejikwani is a very experienced kickboxer and, and should have the advantages in this fight against McKee early. Both of Ejikwani's wins in the UFC have come in round one. He's an early knockout artist. But the problem is we've seen in recent fights that he can get flipped a little bit. He can get tired. He can fade and he can collapse. And so two of his last three losses have come by knockout. One in round one and one in round two. And... That's concerning against a guy like McKee who gets hit a lot and is probably going to get beaten up early, but typically survives those and comes back and then has success late. And McKee almost did that same thing to Andre Lusa in his last UFC fight where he was getting beaten up early, was losing the fight, and hurt Lusa badly late in the fight where if he just survives the first round and a half from Njikawani, McKee might be able to outpace him and hurt him and win inside the distance himself. Njikawani is uh, minus 110 to win inside the distance. That's a great line for 8.6K. McKee's plus 165 to win inside the distance. That's a great line for 7.6K. The value's on McKee now. Either way, I think this fight's probably ending inside the distance. It's minus 500 to end inside the distance. We're probably getting a knockout one way or the other at 8.6K. An early knockout from Njikawani should contend with the optimal lineup. And a mid-round to late-round knockout from McKee probably contends with the optimal at 7.6K. We'll probably get ownership here on both sides, but it's a really strong matchup to target. Um, maybe one that gets a little little bit overlooked, but we'll see. I'm going to be... I, I like Njikwani a little bit more for his early upside potential, but either way, this is a great fight to target, and I don't mind taking the underdog value on McKee there either. All right, that's it for this week's UFC Quick Fix. Thank you so much for the support. You can follow me on Twitter, Brett Apley, double T, double P. Establish the run.com for all the premium content needs. Just finished a two-hour podcast with my guy, Gambles Gordo, going over every single fight on the DraftKings slate. Full breakdowns, projections available as well. Please check that out at establishtherun.com. Thank you very much. Stay safe. Talk to you soon. Peace.